Welcome to a new edition of Bandwidth Blog Live. My name is Edward Love. I'm Brian Smith. And today we're looking at our standout games from E3, both good and bad. So Brian, we begin the list with FIFA 17. Now, ordinarily this game wouldn't appear anywhere near it. New FIFAs traditionally have a few subtle tweaks to the gameplay, updated player rosters, and that's that. But FIFA 17 is different thanks primarily to a new engine, Frostbite, which powers the Battlefield games and is now being used for EA's annual football sim. That means we're going to get FIFA 17 with the most realistic faces yet. But Brian, that's not the cool part. The cool part is that FIFA 17 is introducing a story mode for the first time. Dubbed The Journey, it follows a young man named Alex Hunter as he progresses through his career and you can take control of him from start to finish. Look, your chances rise from the lowly youngster to the budding upstart. Watch him get an agent for the first time and make the move to superstardom at a big name Premier League club. Brian, there's a dialogue free, branching narratives and an onus on you to play well on the pitch. It's like Be A Pro, the Bioware edition. Absolutely. EA even spoke to Bioware two years ago, I think, and when they first began to work on the story mode, they really wanted to get a feel for the best way to construct the story. And while you won't be able to start your own character from scratch, it'll mean Hunter is well-rounded and serves to the best story possible. So Edward, next up on our list is Days Gone, and this looks like just another zombie game. Additionally, this looks similar to The Last of Us. Uncannily so, Brian, but Days Gone is being touted as more than just The Last of Us clone. For a start, you're a biker. And it's set in an open world. Yes, a massive open world in the Pacific Northwest with forested areas, deserts and coastline too. And of course, zombies wherever you look. One of the key ideas in Days Gone is to pitch you against hordes of zombies that you simply can't destroy and have to outrun. The E3 demo showed off lots of cool ways you can use the environment to halt their progress too. Yup, this is less Last of Us and more Mad Max, I think, with feral zombies baying for your blood. Look, one of the great things about Days Gone is that it's totally new. So we had no idea of its existence before the show. And I think all in all, it looks really promising. Number three is Horizon Zero Dawn. Look, Brian, every time I see Horizon in action, I think, you know, wow, this looks pretty, but what is it? It's hard to wrap your head around it. Yes, bows and arrows, and of course, mechs. But those members of the press who have played the game have come away mightily impressed. Look, I like the idea that Guerrilla Games is making something fresh, having been making the Killzone series for the past decade. It's great to see them applying their technical know-how to a new IP. Yes, Horizon looks stunning, and you can tell the developers are confident orchestrators of action. Horizon's big set-piece battles look epic. We're promised an enormous map, the ability to tame machines to fight as your allies, as well as side quests and missions based around human stories. There's also a conversation wheel, which seems to be something of an E3 staple this year. Look, we know the action will be good, and there's a nice mix of RPG elements. The world looks interesting too, and this one's out in early 2017. So, Dishonored. Edward, you're a big fan of the original. Massive, Brian. Game of the year of 2012 and very underrated. Dishonored had so much going for it and I'm very excited for the sequel. It looks as if it's going to retain the signature art style of the original while hugely updating the overall look of the graphics. One of the great aspects of the original that will remain unchanged is the mix of stealth and action and the onus is on the player to plot their path through a level. Yes, Brian, I mean, that's one of the core aspects of the Dishonored experience, and in Dishonored 2, it'll take place 15 years after the original, so this is a direct sequel. You'll play as Corvo again, the protagonist of number one, alongside the young princess, Emily Caldwin, who is now grown up. The sequel takes place in a new location, which is exciting. We've moved away from Dunwall, a version of 19th century London, to Kunaka. So this new setting is looking like it's based around Europe's Mediterranean coast. Uh, so you can expect splashes of color and a different tone, which I think is going to be very, very exciting. We know you can play as either Emily or Corvo throughout the game, meaning you'll potentially have a chance to play it again as a different character later on. Plus, branching endings based on the way you play. The original Dishonored formula is so good, they honestly don't need to change this up too much for it to be good. And Dishonored 2 is looking like one of the best games of 2016. So next up we have Watch Dogs 2. Look, I'll be honest, the first Watch Dogs was a major letdown, Brian. After Ubisoft teased a jaw-dropping gameplay trailer of that game at E3 2012, I mean, I think the final game was all a bit drab. Thankfully for my side, Watch Dogs 2 looks as if it's decided to have a bit more fun. 
So for a start, the tone of the game looks vastly different. Yeah, they're having a lot more fun it seems. It's set in San Francisco, a place I've actually visited, and they've really embraced the colourful vibrancy of the city. It's a city with three different seasons in one day and a ton of different sights to see, so I think it's going to be a very, very cool location. Yeah, from the looks of it, it's brighter and sunnier than the Chicago of Watch Dogs 1, and that seems to be informing the way Ubisoft is approaching gameplay too. You've got neat little pop-up gadgets and a playable character who's less the brooding anti-hero of the first game and more of a youngster who wants to run a mock for the can of graffiti in his back pocket. Well, on the other hand, some reports are suggesting that this is more of the same with the new art style. Brian, it's hard not to feel disappointed when you read that, and I think Ubisoft has a reputation for rehashing the same formula over and over again. But at the very least, I think a more colourful, less serious tone will make this a better game. One of the surprises of E3 2016 was the confirmation that The Last Guardian is not only in development but is actually coming out soon. And after years of waiting and wondering, it's great to hear that this game is still alive. Yes, Edward, October 25th has been confirmed as the release for this PS4 exclusive, which began life on the PS3. Reports suggest The Last Guardian has plenty of charm, but can it really meet modern expectations after such a long time in development? According to Eurogamer, the controls are fiddly, the graphics are a bit dated, but there's an unmissable charm that might just make this all worth it. Brian, are you a big Call of Duty fan? More Battlefield man if I'm honest, but Infinite Warfare looks interesting. Yes, I think we can both agree we were actually very impressed by Infinite Warfare's E3 showing. Finally, a Call of Duty game that does something different. Look, as soon as I saw that you could pilot your own aircraft, a la G Police, I was intrigued. And from there, Zero Gravity Shootout aboard a ship in space looked better still. The Call of Duty games have always had spectacle and spades, but it's about time they actually deliver some interesting gameplay. Look, we know the multiplayer will be very competent, but history tells us the single player campaign might be big, brash and definitely dumb. At least this one looks cool. So now we have Prey 2, and this is a quick one because there isn't a lot to go on, but Prey is back. It's not a sequel or a reboot, but a reimagining, if you will, and we think it's going to take place in a big open world hub. What's interesting is that it's in development at Arcane, the guys behind us on it, so you can expect something hopefully interesting. Yeah, I mean, the first Prey had style and spades, but nothing all that interesting to do, and it was pretty bog standard and all. Obviously, we have very little to go on at this point, and as there wasn't any playable code at E3, but Prey franchise is one that deserves to be kept alive. Next up we have Battlefield 1 and this is a title that's already managed to cultivate a massive following online and it would seem Infinite Warfare has its work cut out for it. The general feel I got from watching Battlefield 1's presence at E3 is not only is the series turning the clock back on time, it's intent on returning to what made the series great originally. Yes, it looks like Battlefield 1 is set to go back to basics with the advent of conquest, domination and operations, which will offer every FPS fan something to celebrate over. I'm specifically looking forward to seeing Battlefront take a traditional class structure and integrate it into the feel of the time period. I can't wait to hop into the role of a pilot and get some nascent airborne action in. So Brian, Mass Effect Andromeda next, and this is a game we've covered quite a bit on the site. Once again, more was shown than told at this year's E3, but from all indications it would see Mass Effect Andromeda is shaping up to be something special. Of particular highlight to me, Ed, beyond the awesome glimpses that we got to what's presumably Earth and our new ship, the Tempest, was how great facial expressions look so far in the game. For a game that places such an emphasis on choice and story, Brian, I think that's a very important point. On the other hand, it's interesting that Bioware seems to be very hesitant to commit to showing any actual plot points in Andromeda, which is eerily reminiscent of how the company handled the initial release of the first Mass Effect game back in 2007. My hope and fear for the future of the franchise once again rests on how Mass Effect decides to tell itself. We've already gotten a huge indication that Andromeda will be centered on exploration, and I hope we don't lose the element of choice along the way. If you want to see exactly what we're hoping for in Andromeda, check out our top 5 wish list. From the makers of Indigo Prophecy, Heavy Rain, and that awful game about supernatural stuff starring Ellen Page, comes Detroit Become Human. Now, Quantic Games have been hit or miss in the past, but like with Heavy Rain, they seem to be at their best when dealing with moral quandaries. I like the idea that Quantic is taking on a future metropolis, one where robots resemble humans and begin to feel like them too. I suspect there'll be lashings of Blade Runner in there, Brian. The E3 trailer did a great job of illustrating just how one small scene can play out in 10, 15 different ways, depending on your actions before the scene and your choices during it. 
Yeah, 100%. That's what makes Quantic Games so special, the illusion of choice. And, you know, it's encouraging to hear that we'll have multiple characters in this one too. A narrative device, Heavy Rain, used with brilliant effect. This is one game we're both really looking forward to. The next game on this list is a controversial one and it's Resident Evil 7. So for me, this is a standout for all the wrong reasons. For a start, it's now first person. When you think Resident Evil, Brian, what do you think of? A third person point of view and a claustrophobic camera. So that's two things. Exactly. And what have they done? They ripped the heart out of it all for VR. Yeah, well, look, VR might be a lot of fun, but I question the reason for it being used. Brian, it's downright diabolical. Look, you'll no doubt still have plenty of scares, but I find it hard to get excited about a Resi game that just doesn't look like Resident Evil. I mean, if you can't see one of the iconic characters on the screen, what are you doing at all? It, for me, it seems like Capcom is trying their best to ape the sort of success of guys like Amnesia, but in a Resident Evil game, is that really the right way to go? Guys, thanks for watching. That was our list of standout games from E3, both good and bad. Just while we have time, a couple of honorable mentions. I want to quickly make a shout out for Gwent the Card Game. That's going to be a day one buy for me. And also Death Stranding, which is about Norman Reedus nude holding a baby. Oh, and it's by Hideo Kojima. I think overall this E3 was pretty darn good. Agreed. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and Google+. And be sure to check us out at bandwithblog.com for more tech, gadget, and gaming news.